move stuff around on my phone, can't find anything. I'm waiting for my Fordham question, Kaylee. <laughs> I'm ready for it. Um, you know, tough one for us. Tough one for us to swallow um, as a team. Just coming off the St. Joe's game where I really thought we battled and I thought we just turned a corner in terms of um, maybe understanding what it takes and that we need everybody's best, every single possession, um, just to grind games out. And again, I've said it before to our team, and I don't, it's not a knock against us, but you know, we're never gonna step on the floor, or very rarely are we gonna step on the floor and be the most talented team. Um, we, we just need to all be locked in, and our margin for error is really slim, physically, mentally, and um, we got off to a great start. Um, you know, really appreciate that, almost expected that, to be honest with you. I thought leaving the St. Joe's game, I thought our team had turned a corner, as I mentioned, um, and we were ready to just take that next step. And coming back home, I was excited about that. Um, you know, playing against a good Duquesne team, really good Duquesne team, talented, and I thought we were going to be up for the challenge, and we were early. You know, and I think in that second quarter, just our lack of scoring, um, you know, got us down, and we were never able to to recover from that kind of mentally, emotionally, um, talked about it at the half. And then I was okay with the way we started a little bit of the third quarter. And then again, I think just started to take steps backwards, backpedal, started to spiral. And, and yeah, the game was out of reach um, by the time we could mount any kind of recovery. So, um, you know, in many ways, we were still fighting some of the challenges that we've been talking about all year. Um, but again, I still, we have a game that we have to turn our attention to on Saturday. And we got to make the next two days, you know, about us and preparing for Fordham. And, and the message isn't going to change, like understanding that we need everyone and we need them for all 40 minutes. And, and that's the only way we're going to be able to, to have success. Coach, I just want to kind of dive deeper into that um, second quarter, kind of what happened with the, more specifically what attributed to the lack of scoring and um, did you Um, no, I didn't think they really made too many adjustments defensively. I mean, maybe showed a little bit more on ball screens. Um, again, I think we missed some shots, and and then just the turnovers mounted. I mean, there were a bunch of travels, and I, I could see it out there. I, I kind of had flashbacks to maybe the fourth quarter of LaSalle when um, I could see us, and th that's our immaturity, you know, getting frustrated, sometimes with ourselves, sometimes with each other, and maybe not even knowing it and letting it affect the next play. You know, we have to be able to move on quickly from mistakes. And I don't think we've, we've, I don't want to say embrace that, but I don't think we've been able to figure that out, you know, individually. And I, for us to become the best basketball players we can be, and really the best people we can be, um, you know, we need to start learning that. And, uh, you know, embracing it, believing me when I'm telling you that. And um, I think, there is a path forward because there's so much room to grow. Alexia, you've now earned a new career high in back-to-back -back games. Um, St. Joe's, you had 22. Tonight, you had 23 points. What has driven you to be one of the leading scorers on this team now in conference play, especially as you've taken on a bigger role scoring-wise? Um, I think I'm just trying to find anything I can do for my team to come out on top. Um, Obviously, it's not enough because we, we didn't get the win. But I'm just trying to do whatever is needed of me, whether that's scoring, defending, rebounding, sharing the ball. So I'm trying to take that under my wing. And Coach, we've seen you come out um, in your team and play very strong. Where is this year, we've also seen you come out and not be able to compete. Where do you think those inconsistencies are lying in your out on the court? I just think we let mistakes spiral, you know, and um, – and we were just unfortunately not strong enough to recover mentally, I'll say, you know, or be able to just get an easy basket, you know, to get us moving in the right direction again. You know, I think there are times we're close to, for that to happen and then it's like a miss layup or, or a turnover or a travel. And we just gotta understand, you just gotta keep fighting. All right, didn't get it that possession. Let's really lock in on defense this possession. 
you know, and then we're going to get our opportunity. And I told the team um, probably before the St. Joe's game, like, every possession matters because you don't know which one's going to determine the outcome of the game. And every possession matters because you don't know what's going to change the momentum of the game. And, and there were times tonight where I think, again, we looked a little defeated because we were so worried about the score. And if we're not scoring, man, 11 points looks insurmountable. And I get it. I get it. But just focusing on that isn't – that's how you go down 20. You know, instead of fo focusing possession by possession. So I've really talked about that message more in the last maybe week or two. Um, you know, and, and I feel like I've been consistent with my messaging, and that's I'm trying to control what I control, control in that regard. Last year, you're having a great uh, grass season. Um, and it's fun to watch you come along. Um, one thing I really love is your game face. So I just love to hear what you're thinking when you're on defense and offense about about the Honda affecting. Because I, I can see your mind racing. Um, I'm excited for this answer. <laughs> um, <laughs> I just be thinking, um, one, try to get to steal, yeah. try to get easy buckets. Um, and on the offensive side, I feel like I've gained a lot more confidence in myself. So I feel like trying to make things happen when they open up. Um, but yeah, I try to keep a smooth, <laughs> try to keep a smooth face on my face all the time. But I know my emotions wear on my sleeves. But that's a good question. I don't know. <laughs> and it's it's been a fun journey and a fun, I'll say last few weeks, you know, again, obviously it's my first year in this role, but just working with point guards in the past from, you know, in a different role as an assistant coach, I, I want to make sure that the point guards on our team and I are always on the same page and connecting. I still think that that's been a learning curve for us this year. Um, you know, Alexia is scoring more this year than she has in the past, and that's something we, we had talked about during the recruiting process. And, you know, even, you know, coming off the injury, we, we need that from that position. I want to coach point guards that want to score the basketball. And I think it's just always striking that balance, one, understanding how they're guarding, and then striking that balance like, how can I get my teammates involved too? You know, in the post, on the perimeter. How can I make their lives easier um, and still stay aggressive scoring the basketball? So I've been really, obviously, you know, every time we, we've stepped off the court, I feel like it's been a new career high for Alexia. So big kudos to her for doing that. And, you know, knocking down three for four from three, you know, makes her harder to guard, makes us harder to guard. And I think the challenge for us up here is okay, how can we keep that level of play? Um, and then get more teammates involved. So there are four players scoring in double figures, five players scoring in double figures, because that's the team we have to be. You know, and I, I've been really open with Alexia. Like, that's her challenge. You know, my challenge is keeping us on the same page and making sure she understands what I want from the position. Um, and her challenge is also like, hey, how can I help pull this team along um, to help us play the best basketball we can? The pattern of your timeout seemed to come every time you came went on a you know, six to ten zero run. What went into those decisions, even with oncoming media timeouts, and what's the messaging to the team during those timeouts? Well, I think you know there's times where you wait for media's, you know, and I thought about that especially in the first quarter, um, but you know you you can't save them, and I think we've been the way we played this year. Those runs tend to spiral. And I think for us, it's about, hey, we need to get a good possession. I can't guarantee we're going to get a score on the next possession, but it just gives me an opportunity for them to take a deep breath. And we need to execute and get a good possession on the offensive side of the floor. So like I know in the fourth quarter, geez, I think there was probably the last eight minutes, you know, I didn't have a timeout to call. And they're scoring and we're scoring. And we're just saying push the basketball. Um, but, but I thought they were necessary when, when we called them because I needed to keep the game as close as possible. And I thought waiting for the medias in those times, you know, wasn't going to be the, um, the appropriate move. Good question. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, thanks all.